Hello, hello. We are back and we are going to pick up where we left off the second half of the Simplicity of God's Will, Part 1. As promised, we are now going to pick up with the second half, so I hope you're ready. This current slide that we're looking at, you will never go wrong. You will never go wrong waiting it out. What I mean by that, you'll never go wrong waiting it out. When you're trying to discover what is the will of God and are you in the will of God, waiting it out means not making emotional, or as the kids say today, decisions in your feelings. Waiting it out, praying, doing the things you know to do spiritually. You've prayed about it. You have sought godly wisdom. You have um, made sure your motives were pure. You've made sure you had a clean heart about it. And so not making a quick, out-of-order decision, you wait it out. Next, a time of consecration. A time of consecration, you'll never go wrong if you take out time and decide to pull back, meaning you pull back from social media, you pull back from maybe if sugar is your thing or watching Netflix, um, whatever seems to take up a lot of mind time. And you decide to instead, doing, instead of doing the things you would normally do, you give that time to God about what you're seeking, seeking him for his wisdom, seeking him for his guidance, inviting him into the situation. So a time of consecration, you will never go wrong. Uh, being courageous, being courageous. When you are seeking God for his will and you are taking one step at a time, you are checking your motive, you are checking your heart, you're hearing little bits and pieces and you're trying to obey them. You will have to be courageous because sometimes God's will doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. If you've done all you know to do, you may not have anybody else's approval. You may not have anybody else's understanding. Sometimes you will have to stand alone and you will have to be courageous when it comes to God's will. Not having all the facts, not having all the answers. You have to be okay with that as well. What, why would we need faith if you had all the answers, if you had all the facts and you completely understood what you were going to do next? Sometimes a faith walk is needed in seeking God for his will and wondering, am I where I'm supposed to be? And I'll share something with you. And if you're doing that with a clean heart and with pure motives, even if it doesn't go right, that's part of God's plan as well. Because that's when we learn. That's when we can share our letdowns or mistakes with other people and they become points of encouragement. Next, it says basic obedience. Basic obedience. If we're not sensitive enough to hear the Holy Spirit tell us in our regular everyday walk with God to maybe ask somebody for forgiveness or apologize for something you may have done wrong, or you may um, have the Holy Spirit want to pull you back a minute to pray about something or change your demeanor or attitude in the midst of a situation or a conversation, if we're not obeying the small things, why would he trust us with anything bigger? Because we have to learn the sensitivities and the obedience at one level before the next. There are no professional athletes that decided at home, I'm going to be a professional athlete and went out the next day and became awesome. There was some practice, there was some sacrifice, there was some getting it right, there was some getting it wrong. There was some maybe being humiliated, having your pride hurt. Think about it that way. We have to learn and our, to trust our father and our father trusts us with the small things in his will and in, his, in obeying him. So we can't really ask for the huge when we're still learning how to take care of the small. So learn to discipline your flesh, you, your own personality, your own mindset, 
and obey God in the basic things. The next slide. Sorry about that. You will never go wrong dissecting the evidence. You'll never go wrong dissecting the evidence. What does that mean? Sometimes we're asking God about his will for a certain situation, and I'm going to use something very plain that everybody can understand, a relationship. You're praying for a particular uh, person, be it a man or a woman. You want some companionship, and let's just happen to say you want godly companionship. Dissecting the evidence. The skies might not part and a voice from heaven come down and say, this is the person for you. No. You're going to ask God that question, and then you're going to watch with these eyes, discernment, the spirit inside of you speaking small instructions. Is this person patient? Do I notice this person praying on their own? Do they have a spiritual life outside of me? Um, are they walking in a godly manner? You'll be able to see those things just by keeping company with them. Or are they the exact opposite of that and you just want it to be what you want it to be? Okay? And then if it's not quite what you expected it to turn out, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. No. You have to dissect the evidence. Use common sense, plain old discernment sometimes when it comes to God's will. Using disappointment and discouragement and failures and unmet expectations as tools of power and growth. Oh, that was some, those were some of the hardest parts of my life, but now they are some, have turned out to be some of the richest. Things will not go our way. You are promised to be discouraged. You will have unmet expectations. What do you do with them? What do you do with them? You use them for change. You use them for wisdom. You use them to reset your perspective. You use them to hear God. And you use them to move on. Pray for revelation and perspective. There is nothing wrong with seeking God for his will and asking him, reveal to me what I don't see and give me a perspective about this circumstance other than my own. Move past my desires move past all of my experiences that shape the way I see and allow me to see this according to your, with your eyes, according to your will. And he will, if you honestly ask him to. That's one of my most favorite prayers for revelation and God's perspective. Also, reasons without relationship the simplicity of God's will. And when we started these videos, I said to you, the big picture is you. God's will is you. He made a way to be joint back together with you in an intimate relationship through the blood of his son. Once you start to cultivate that relationship with God, build that relationship with God, you get your own prayer time. You get your own language with him. You get your own everything. He will reveal more clearly than ever in your life his will daily, his will for situations, his will for your life, and on and on and on. Do we want God or what he can do for us? What does an intimate relationship with God look like? What do you do to build it? You do the same thing you would do with a regular relationship. Do you have a relationship with anyone right now that you don't talk to, that you don't spend time with, that you completely ignore? If so, I bet it's not a very good relationship. So you start small, you carve out five minutes, find you a devotion, a devotional to read, or if it's just one scripture, because that's how we find out about God is reading his word. You talk to him. You cry out to him. 
you say to him the things you won't say to anybody else. You ask him for strength. Five minutes become 10 minutes. 10 minutes becomes 15 minutes. And before you know it, you will know in an instant when you're praying and you have peace about something or you're talking to your father and you don't have peace about it. And then peace will become your guide. You will be just that sensitive in your relationship with God. I left here some scriptures for you to reference. Also, at the bottom of your screen, it says, intimacy with God is the deepest form of healing, freedom, wisdom, purpose, and so on. The deepest form of all of those things you will find in a relationship with God. I promise you will never find them in man, in humanity, or anything this world has to offer. Let's move on. And I believe this is our last slide. Growth is always in order when we're seeking God for his will, the simplicity of God's will. You want to know something real simple? The Lord wants us to grow up and be mature in him so that the little waves of this world, the little ups and downs in life won't cause us to drown every time things are not going the way that we want them to go. So growth is always in order. I've left um, several passages here on your screen, Ephesians 5, Colossians 3, Galatians 5 and 6. As you read them, look for the love of God as you're building a relationship with him so that you can discover more about him. Look for an instruction, search for a promise and pray that promise if you're so led to. A conviction that leads to repentance. One thing about the word, it's loving truth. And if it grabs your heart and causes you to mm, repent, repent. And then it also says here, a cry for help to change. I've never been successful changing anything on my own. Ask God for strength and knowledge about the Father. Write down something you discover about God as you search those scriptures. I look forward to you doing that homework. Now, if you have any questions or, or questions you would like for me to answer, and if you are looking at this from our website, all you do is just get in touch with us through one of those modes of communication. Also, I think it's email, phone, uh, my phone number. Um, let's see. And there is also a way through the website to contact us for prayer and any other concerns. But we're also on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Please come out and see us for our monthly sessions. The second Saturday of every month, except April. April is going to be the third Saturday because the second Saturday is um, the Easter weekend. So just for my soul, Discipleship Ministry, hope to see you in one of our monthly sessions. All you got with these two videos were the clip notes. In person, it is something else. All right, for now, always remember, God is truly the lover of your soul. Bye-bye.